Welcome to Hennepin Avenue United Methodist Church in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I'm Frenchie McGee, Associate Pastor. The sound of the singing bowl calls us to worship. It calls us to community. It calls us to life together. And whoever you are, wherever you are, wherever you've come from and wherever you may go when we leave this sacred time together, you are welcome to Sacred Journey. If you haven't already done it, you're invited to download today's worship guide. You'll find it in the Facebook Live comments and notes and in the YouTube comments and at haumc.org slash live. It has the prayers and songs and more information about today's service. It'll help you connect and have a more personal, intimate worship experience. So, you're invited now to take a deep breath to release the cares that are behind you from the week and to open your heart, open your very self to the presence of spirit here with us in this moment. Welcome to worship. Welcome to Hennepin. Good morning. I want to take a moment to introduce you to our special musical guests for the day. Wade and Quentin Fernandez. They are members of the Menominee Nation. Wade is a wonderful songwriter, guitarist, and also plays traditional native flute. And he's joined by his son Quentin, who is a keyboardist and drummer. I hope you enjoy them and learn from them. And to start out with today, please join in singing with me on our gathering song. Whatsoever you do for the least of my people that you do unto me, whatsoever you do for the least of my people that you do unto me. When I was hungry, you gave me to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me to drink. When I was homeless, you opened your door. Clean for safety, you pulled me on shore. Now we Hello, my name is Daryl Boudreaux. I will be reading the poem, Lift Every Voice and Sing, written by James Weldon Johnson. 
Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. Ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. Stony, the road we trod, bitter, the chastening rod. Felt in the days when hope unborn had died, yet with a steady beat, have not our weary feet come to the place for which our fathers sighed? We have come over a way with tears has been watered. We have come treading our paths through the blood of the slaughtered, out from the gloomy past, till now we stand at last, where the white gleam of our bright star is cast. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, Thou who has brought us thus far on the way, Thou who has by Thy might led us into the light, keep us forever in the path we pray, lest our feet stray from the places, our God, where we met Thee, lest our hearts Drunk with the wine of the world, we forget thee. Shadowed beneath thy hand, may we forever stand true to our God, true to our native land. There's a change brewing, brother Time to wake up and rise Light lighting up in the dark There's a change in the rise Oil smoke refineries polluting up the sky Nuclear fallouts, radiation high Pipelines puking black smoke Mining everywhere Change a bottle of water, please don't change a bottle of air. There's a change, ruined brother. Time to wake up and rise. Light lighting up on the dark, there's a change on the rise. Victims of comfort in a plastic world. Voting daily lies, media's unfurled. Grandmother calls with peace and with prayer. Checking and standing as a change in the air
Victims of comfort in the plastic world Bored and dirty lies, media's unfurled Grandmother calls, with peace and with bread Protecting and standing as a change in the air Time to wake up and rise Change needing sister Time to wake up and rise A light lighting up in the dark There's a change on the rise There's a light lighting up in the dark Change on the rise There's a light lighting up in the dark There's a change on the rise In all the waking hours, the tentacles of time give channel to each living thing. The bird on wing, the mole moving in darkness underground, the cricket chanting its evening song, the primeval whale sporting in chilly seas, or floating noiselessly in turbulent waters, in mountain crevice or sprawling meadow, the delicate beauty of color stained flower or fragile leaf, high beyond the timber line, the sprig of green dares wind and snow, in the barren parchness of desert waste, the juiceless shrub and waterlogged cactus. High in the treetop, the green pearled fruit of olive mistletoe and the soft gray stillness of creeping moss. The infant, the growing child, the stumbling adolescent, the young adult, the man full-blown or stooped with years, the tentacles of time give channel to each living thing. And beyond this, thoughts that move with grace of being. Light thoughts that dance and sing, untouched by gloom or shadow or the dark. Weighty thoughts that press down upon the road with tracks that blossom into dreams or shape themselves in plan and scheme. Thoughts that whisper, thoughts that shout, Thoughts that wander without rest 
seeking, seeking, always seeking thoughts that challenge, thoughts that soothe the tentacles of time, give channel to each living thing. Out from the house of life, all things come, and into it each returns again for rest. When I awake, I am still with thee. Please join me in these words of prayer. Holy One, we seek renewed life for our planet and hope for all creation. Teach us to love the sacred mystery as we grow in gratitude for the gifts of earth, sea, and sky. May we forge a new friendship with all life as your healing energy flows through us into our earth home. In the love of the cosmic Christ, we pray, amen. This morning, our scripture reading is coming from the first letter of John, from the fifth chapter. I'll be reading from the message. My purpose in writing is simply this, that you who believe in God's Son will know beyond the shadow of a doubt that you have eternal life, the reality and not the illusion. And how bold and free we then become in his presence freely asking according to his will, sure that God's listening. And if we're confident that God's listening, we know that what we've asked for is as good as ours. For instance, if we see a Christian believer sinning, clearly I'm not talking about those who make a practice of sin in a way that is fatal, leading to eternal death. We, we ask for God's help, and God gladly gives it, gives life to the sinner whose sin is not fatal. There is such a thing as a fatal sin, and I'm not urging you to pray about that. Everything we do wrong is sin, but not all sin is fatal. We know that none of the God-begotten makes a practice of sin, fatal sin. The God-begotten are also the God-protected. The adversary can't lay a hand on them. We know that we are held firm by God. It's only the people of the world who continue in the grip of the evil one. And we know that the Son of God came so we could recognize and understand the truth of God. What a gift! And we are living in the truth itself, in God's Son, Jesus Christ. This Jesus is both true God and real life. Dear children, be on guard against all clever facsimiles. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Broken bottles, broken dreams. Step lightly on your moves, your soul. Broken promises. Broken hearts in this land that I call home. Broken treaties and broken homes. Boarding schools broke apart our ties. 
broken things can be broken long Cause in our hearts we kept a smile Take a walk with me in beauty on the reservation Take a walk and see the beauty of this native nation when the rain came down We stood on sacred ground And when the dark sky appeared We threw away our tears And stood up tall And we stayed Messages can't break us down. I take my hand, it's not too late. Take a walk with me and build me on the reservation. Take a walk and see. Welcome again to worship here at Hennepin Avenue United Methodist Church. We are closing the series, Dismantling Racism, Pressing on to Freedom. It's been an exploration through the short New Testament book, 1 John. 
The first in this case, remember, stands for the first letter or the first epistle. It's one of three written to a community that was believed to have grown up around the disciple who Jesus loved, which is how John is described in Scripture. And if you're not acquainted with the three epistles, I invite you to read them. They're very short. I know that many of you have been following along in these weeks as we have woven our way through this little book. But it's a great time to reacquaint yourself with John's Gospel. John was the mystic Gospel. If you remember anything about the Scriptures, about the New Testament, you know that there are three Gospels whose stories line up. They're called synoptic, meaning that they have the same lens, the same eye, sin, optic. But John is very different. It's described as the mystic or cosmic Gospel because it places Jesus in human history as the cosmic Christ, as one possessing the universal spirit of creation and compassion that guides and animates all of life. And when I think about how that spirit lives still today in each of us, when I think about how Father Richard Rohr describes the universal Christ, and as we engage more and more with the spaciousness of spirit in our lives, we come to realize that there is a common spirit animating and calling all of humanity to our true vocation of being fully and completely human. I think it's such a wonderful opportunity to remember that John describes it beautifully, balancing Jesus, who he saw, touched, experienced life with, along with the Spirit of Christ, that Spirit that we would come to know as the Holy Spirit, as it animated and guided and woven to the Church. And so the scripture that you text that you just heard read, I know probably hit you a little hard. It's a really hard-hitting text. It has a lot of dualism again, a lot of light and dark, a lot of sense of in and out, describes life as we and they. And you may be wondering how, in fact, we can use that kind of text when we're talking about not ins and outs, but we're talking about circles of compassion and opportunities for growth. Well, stay with me for a few minutes and I hope we'll all find some illumination. To do that, I want to point you to one sentence at the very beginning of the text. And if you're following along or if you wrote it down, it says simply, my purpose in writing is this, that you who believe in God's Son will know without a doubt that you have eternal life, the reality, and not the illusion. And then later on, we'll look at the very end of the text where John says, or the writer says, stay away from clever facsimiles. So hold those two things with me in balance. You might even want to weigh them in your hands that you who believe will know without a doubt that you have eternal life, the reality and not the illusion. And that you who believe and have that reality will stay away from clever facsimiles. Mysticism and the idea of being related to the cosmic Christ is such a guiding principle of how we live in the world as Christians and believers who are faced with spiritual stretching each and every time we encounter the big problems of humanity. Over and over, we see that the question for humanity becomes, how can we keep facing such terrible things that we do to each other, while at the same time embracing the beauty and the goodness and the creation? This writer, the first the writer of First John sets a model for how those who believe and understand the message of Jesus as transformative for their life can embrace it and then live with boldness by being witnesses. Witnesses, first of all, 
that their lives have been changed, their perspective has been shifted, that something about engaging and receiving the message of Jesus, that message of grace, that message of forgiveness, that message of love, makes them different and transform them so that then they become witnesses to the reality that life in the world can be transformed as they embody that message of Jesus, as they prioritize that message, which we call the gospel, above all the other messages that they receive from the systems of the world that they live in. In other words, this writer wants us to know that the message of Jesus points us toward a creative and recreative work where we can both imagine and build God's tomorrow today. God's tomorrow today. And that raises some questions for us as we think about how persuasive is this message for you? How persuasive is it for you that God's spirit, the animating spirit of Christ, the cosmic Christ that was found in Jesus, that was then given to the church, that still guides communities of compassion, communities of faith, is present for you? The work of social justice cannot simply be accomplished as a sociological or an anthropological or an academic or even a legal enterprise. Someone said years ago, you can't legislate morality and you can't legislate what's in the human heart. And I think that this writer might very well agree with that, which is why there's such a care to say, first of all, Know for yourself that something internally has happened so that the work of social justice is flowing from your interest in seeing God's presence made real in the world in which we live. One of the people who embodied that balanced perspective, that holistic perspective, was Howard Thurman who you saw just a few moments ago in The Blessing of Creation, activist, poet, academic, preacher, and mystic. Howard Thurman, if you really want to know the truth, was who inspired Martin Luther King. We carry King's books with us. We carry and we look to King's messages. But King got his inspiration from Thurman. And in his most famous work, Jesus and the Disinherited, Thurman points toward the religion of Jesus as seminal for those who stand with their backs against the wall. And Thurman says that you can step out of our social and political and cultural frames of reference if we allow ourselves to meet each other as human beings united on a ground of reality that is unmarked by separateness and difference. As a black man, as a black minister, as a black academic, Thurman knew that he was in a world which would never actually receive him in the fullness of, hu of his humanity. And so he found that peace and he found that acceptance not only in the message of Jesus, but also in his mystical understanding and appreciation for the beauty of God's creation. Thurman says that there is an original harmony and wholeness in, in creation. And it's been disrupted. It's been disrupted by the action and inaction of humans. And this broken harmony, more than anything else, is what is at the seat of white supremacy that wounds our white brothers and sisters. And it is at the seat of systemic racism that oppresses people of color. And therefore, he says, our vocation is to rediscover and reclaim that original harmony. First, by, dis by confronting the disharmony that we have brought to each other. And that's what we've done over these last few weeks. We have looked at the call to love. We have called ourselves and looked at the challenge of what it means to be a church that is not only anti-racist, but what it means for us to be a church that is really committed to embracing that message of Jesus's love 
and joy for each one of us. And so today I want to ask you, can you imagine a circle of compassion so wide that no one stands outside the circle? Can you imagine that the religion of Jesus would be so embraced and so captivating that it would make that circle wider and wider and push everyone out to the margin so that the margins themselves are erased and the other becomes a sister and a brother? Can you imagine that when we think about environmental justice, educational justice, economic opportunity, when we think about health care, and when we think about the criminal justice system, that you and I would be part of making change that is so real that systems that have held people in place for generations would not only be broken apart, but they would melt away under the power of our love. This is the work of pressing on to freedom, not just lamenting what has happened, but actually moving beyond the disharmony to reclaiming and recapturing the harmony. Friends, as we move forward into a new season, as we think about what it means to really be the community of Jesus and followers of Christ, what would it look like if we found the courage to look at these five problems faithfully, not just as social problems, but as opportunities to embody the gospel, as those who have nothing to lose because we have already received the most amazing gift that God could ever give, the gift of life. What would it mean if we each embraced the strategic initiatives that we talk about so often, building beloved community, reaching new people, healing the hurt, as opportunities to make our lives witnesses to the gospel message in action. What would it mean for you not to assume that this was the work for somebody else in some other time, in some other place, but that this was your work in your time, in your place, and it was your season? You know, Howard Thurman actually preached at Hennepin in 1951, and his sermon title was The Crucial Alternative. I have to tell you, I looked and looked and looked for the text or a manuscript so that I might be able to mine a few nuggets, and I couldn't find one. But in reading some of his other work, I think I can glean a little bit of what that crucial alternative was. It was an alternative to disharmony by embracing love. It was finding the alternative to injustice by embracing the opportunity to use our voices. It was calling white churches and white congregations, homogenous in many places and many spaces, to not simply be tolerant, but to be openly, assertively seeking multicultural beloved community. And I think that it was those principles that Thurman put into action when he founded the Church for All Souls later on in San Francisco believed to be the very first intentionally multicultural Christian community. Today, in 2020, we don't have to go very far to find that opportunity. It's right around the corner. It's on our front doors. It's on the street next to us. It's in North Minneapolis. It's at 38 in Chicago. It's down the road. And if we are willing to turn our attention away from the clever facsimiles 
Christian nationalism that falsely conflates patriotism and love of country with love for God, letting forth loose a horrible misunderstanding that says that there is a nation state which could ever be equal to the kingdom of God, the imagination of the universal Christ. God is so much bigger. If we can turn away from those clever facsimiles that push us into factions and falsely make us believe that we can't do this work of becoming beloved community. If we push away those clever facsimiles of religion that says that only the poor are unworthy and that those who are wealthier are closer to God because somehow they have lived into a false prosperity gospel, if we are willing to push away those facsimiles and peel back the layers so that we recover again the message that comes to us in the Old Testament, even from Micah, to love justice, walk humbly with God, and show mercy. Or as Jesus reminded us, to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love our neighbor as ourself remembering that God loved us first and called us beloved. If we're willing to do that, to press on to freedom, then no matter what challenges come before us, we will be spiritually ready. We will be theologically equipped we will be full of compassion that animates us and churns within us whenever we see injustice and oppression. And we will be so much farther along in our sacred journey of creating beloved community where all people have a place and a space because we've realized that all people are God's people, and that the work of the church is to share that message day in, day out, in every possible way, and every possible space. May it be so for us, not only today, but for all seasons. In the name of the Cosmic Christ, in the name of Jesus, amen.
Let's join our voices and hearts together as we pray. Peacemaking spirit teaches compassion for one another, the grace of sharing power with each other, and a sacred gift of seeing each person as wholly human. Pour into us the wisdom to bring healing and reconciliation as we honor the Spirit's beauty in all people. May we especially hear and pay attention to the voices of those who have been pushed aside for too long. Amen. This week, I hope you've had some moments and milestones that have brought a smile to your face and joy to your heart. Celebrations remind us that even in challenging times, spirit is still with us and that life is a joyous journey. This week, I'd like to invite you to celebrate with a very special person. Bill Pilgrim, oldest member of this community is 103. And if you'd like to help Bill celebrate, would you mail a card to 511 Groveland Avenue, Minneapolis, Minnesota 55403? It is a joy to remember that the goodness of life is still experienced and shared together in community. God grant us all many years to celebrate. God grant you many years. God grant you many years. God grant you many years. God grant you many Friends, the chill in the air when we wake up in the morning and the leaves changing around us are an indicator that fall really is here. But fall brings with it a new set of opportunities for growth and grace, and I'd like to share some of them with you now. Beginning tonight at 8 o'clock, Raising White Kids, a discussion group led by Becky Bolin and Taylor Reeb, helps parents and educators and anyone who loves children Talk to the young people in your lives about social justice issues. Our young people are aware. They are, as some like to put it, woke. And if we're going to be able to talk with them, it's important for us to know how to share information and how to be calm, be cool, be collected when they ask the hard questions. So join the discussion group Raising White Kids. Find out more at haumc.org slash events. There's no charge, but you do need to register. The Dignity Center Coat Drive begins tomorrow. Sometimes love looks and feels like a warm winter coat, and you can bring your new or gently used adult coats to the East Entry between 8 a.m. and 2 p.m. Monday through Friday. If those times don't suit and you need to make an appointment, email mary at haumc.org. Mary Martin, Outreach Director, will happily receive your new or gently used adult coat. The State of the Church will be held on November 1st. It will be held by Zoom. You can call in or you can join by video. And you'll want to be a part of the State of the Church as we kick off the new series, Building Beloved Community. Giving to Build Beloved Community. The state of the church helps us see where we've been, and it helps us hear where Spirit is calling us to go. Pay close attention to your mail and email for your invitation. And then, on Sunday, November 1st, join for the state of the church. The most exciting opportunity I'd love to share with you today is the Trunk or Treat Halloween celebration on Friday, October 30th. It's going to be socially distanced and safe fun for all ages as we come together to remind ourselves that even in challenging times like a pandemic, we can still share life together. So put on your favorite costumes, invite your neighbors, bring your kids, and come enjoy some fun at this free event, Friday, October 30th, for the Safe Socially Distanced Trunk or Treat Halloween Celebration. Life Together at Hennepin is a community effort. And however you give, 
however you show up and participate, it is a wonderful expression of the Spirit in all our lives. If you'd like to give a financial gift, please, you can mail your check to 511 Groveland Avenue, Minneapolis, Minnesota, 55403. You can give online at haumc.org slash give. You can also give by text to the number on your screen. However you give, financially, in participation, in presence, and especially in prayer, your generosity, your gifts make a difference in the lives of people. And speaking of prayer, if you'd like to share a prayer so that we can pray together with you and for you, you can email them to prayers at haumc.org or you can use the congregational care forms, haumc.org slash care. If your prayer is confidential, you'll find a confidential form for information seen only by our pastors. Our prayers help us to stay strong and help us to hear Spirit's guidance in our lives. Let's pray together. Now, we'll share a closing song, and then we'll be back to share today's closing blessing. But I invite you again to remember that growing together on our sacred journeys and sharing life together is a wonderful gift of spirit. Get involved as you're led. You'll be glad you did. My life flows on in endless song Above earth's lamentation I hear a real the far of him That hails a new creation No storm can shake my inmost calm Whilst to that rock I'm clinging since love is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? Ooh, through all the tumult and the strife, I hear the music ringing. It sounds and echoes in my soul. Can I keep from singing? No storm can shake my inmost calm. Whilst to that rock I'm clinging, since love is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? What though the tempest round me roar, I hear the truth it liveth. What though the darkness round me close, songs in the night it giveth. No storm can shake my inmost cold. Whilst to that rock I'm clinging, since love is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? Peace of God makes fresh my heart 
a fountain ever springing. All things are mine since I am God's. How can I keep from singing? No storm can shake my inmost calm. Will stew that rock I'm clinging. Since love is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? Beloved, as you go into the world and the week that awaits, may the Spirit of Christ within you give you courage. May the Spirit give you clarity, commitment, comfort. And may the Spirit guide you as you continue to transform the world, to reshape systems so that they move from oppression to justice until God's shalom is seen, heard, felt, and experienced by all people. And all God's people said, Amen. Ah, women. Ah, children. Ah, animals. Ah, creation. Ah.